what's up guys back with another video and today I'm gonna show you how to do a lift axle with only $40 and it's pretty easy all you need is gonna be two of these brass ball valves $15 a piece and two of these uh, nipple fittings that cost about $5 each and that's pretty much it now the reason why I want to do this lift axle thing on the low boy it's for three main reasons as you can see this little boy has three set axles on the back and I run the tollways a lot I average about five hundred six hundred dollars a month on tollways and that's because running the truck with the low boy it's six axles that I'm running on the tollway so by lifting one axle up that'll save me about a dollar and twenty five each run and I run about sixty 65 times a month so that averages about 900 to a thousand dollars a year i could be saving just by having one of these axles up now that's pretty much the main point of me doing this but also obviously with one of these axles up there's less wear and tear on four tires and the brakes on that axle so with that being said let's get started i'm underneath the trailer now and let me explain to you guys how the air works on the airbags so you got one air tank right here one of those lines distributes air into this fitting which then the air goes into this airbag and it transfers to the airbag in the middle and then that one has a T just like this which goes to that airbag and also distributes air to the one in the front axle so all I'm gonna do now is get my valve and my fitting I'm gonna take this apart add this nipple fitting right there add the valve and then this fitting will go on the top of the valve so when I shut it down the air coming in from the tank can still go to the other airbags but it'll just cancel out this single airbag right here I'm gonna add liquid Teflon to this nipple fitting. I'm gonna have to disassemble this lever. So I can be able to put this valve in there because this bracket is not letting me do it. There it is guys, close valve, open valve, close, open. And I can access it really easily from this opening up here.
there it is guys i got this side ready to go and this was a perfect fit right here opened close now all i have to do is the other side which is going to be way easier than the other one because as you can see there's lots of space here to work with Simple as that, valve closed, open. And like you saw, it was pretty easy. Didn't need many tools, just some Teflon and a tool to take out the fittings and that's it. Now, see how easy it is for me to access these valves. Here's one of them. I just opened it, closed it. And the other one is right here, open close very simple and easy to do what i'm gonna do right now is turn the truck on build some air pressure and we'll see how those valves work videos I had shown you guys I had welded these two D-rings up here the original plan was for me to use those valves on these airbags and just have a chain loop right here through the axle to those D-rings but now that I got here to the yard I was thinking man well that's not bad but then I thought to myself it's better to have the last axle up because that way I can make sharper turns and I don't have to drag the trailer that much. So that'll save me a couple feet, you know, when it's time to do some tight turns and stuff in residential areas. And it's not gonna be that hard to hold up either. All I have to do, I'm gonna put a hook here with a 3 8 chain, hook the binder from that chain, but have the chain loop around the axle. And I'll just get under there and use the ratch to tighten it up. So that's what I like about that, the valves, that it's just pretty much gonna be holding the axle. There's gonna be no pressure or nothing. The trailer tank should be full with air already. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the bags with air. And these two valves are closed. So that means those four bags should be going up, except these two. So, so far no air leaks and those four airbags went up. Now it's time to see if these have any air in them. Yep, as y'all can see, there's no air in these airbags unless I open the valve. it is let's do the same thing to this one I'm gonna open it slowly just so the airbag can get its shape all right now I can open it all the way up and there it is guys simple as that now what I'm gonna be doing is dropping the bags all the way down. So 
gonna close this valve. The way I will know that the bags are all the way down is if this plate right here is sitting on the U-bolt, which it is. Same thing over here. The plate's touching the U-bolt. That means that the axle is all the way down now. I can go ahead and close the valves. And I'm doing this from under the truck just to show you guys. I'm going to use a 3 8 5 foot chain, which I'm going to have to get another one without this big hook. Just two small hooks like this one. And I have a binder here. What I'm going to do is have this hook right here like this. for the moment of truth will the axle stay up as you can see ran this chain with the binder and i can tighten it and loosen it from up here so i'll pretty much just have to get underneath the trailer to take the chain off but that's it valves are closed and let's put the airbag up now Just got here to pick up the dozer. Just bake it till you make it. Gotta drop some bags. This is a 650J John Deere dozer. Normally I tilt the blade on the dozers when I'm hauling them, but this one here, blade's not that big, so I'm just leave it like that. It only sticks out about 
five, six inches from each side. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. I'm so excited with this little setup I did back here. I know some of y'all gonna hate it. Y'all gonna talk mess about it. But I like it. I think it's badass. There's my uncle pulling up. That's uh, my trailer right there, the gooseneck. They went to Extreme Off-Road yesterday. Took the razors. But let me get this machine chained down. Drop the dozer as y'all can see back there. Time to head out of here. And I already talked to the water. He's gonna go to the yard here in a bit. That way I can get that axle higher off the ground. here and as y'all can see he's already taken off those plates from the axles the first and the last axle had them it's getting kind of dark the water already left he finished with that and also not sure if y'all can see the old gmc the 1970 i already took that ladder it had on the back of it picked it up with the excavator and all that it just it just happened too quick i wasn't able to record none of that I just picked up a Hyundai excavator at a ranch. As y'all can see, I'm loaded. And there's a lot of tight turns I have to go through. That's the reason why I put the, the axle up. I've been moving machines all week. And uh, it's been 40, 50,000 pound machines. So I've had the axle down. I just put it up right now. And I'm going to put the GoPro somewhere up there. So y'all can see what I'm talking about right now once I get out of here to get on a... Uh, 99 but there it is now the axle sits a little bit higher without that spacer GoPro fell off and I noticed it far away from here so I'm glad I came back and I looked for it I thought I was gonna find it but let's see if it turns on oh man I'm glad I found this thing looks like it froze because it's on but the screen don't work man that was close <laughs> that was real close I had never lost the GoPro 
I wonder why that happened. And I gotta turn around. Probably gonna back up. There's a neighborhood I could pull into and turn around. Super tight turn. And this is one of the turns I was really wanting to record with the GoPro where I had it. Let's see if I can record with this one. about these T-800, super easy to maneuver. too much on my first level because the neck sits too close to the fenders and that was one of the reasons I really wanted to get those valves on this front axle so if I'm not going into any tight spaces or anything I just want to save me some uh, easy tag toes I can put this one down and put that one up as y'all can see my front axle sits way higher than the back axle when I got the trailer raised on the higher settings and that's the reason why I wanted to do it to this axle. Because unless I have to go onto some tight spots where I know it's kind of narrow, I can just put the last axle up. But if I don't need that, I can just put my front axle up and it'll be uh, way better. Right there, it has four inches off the ground and it'll go higher because I'm on the third setting. If I go another setting up, it'll give me about another inch up front. So that'll be five inches. Remember on the front axle of the low boy, the higher I am on the neck, the higher the axle will go. Now on that last axle, the lower I go on the neck, the higher the axle will go. If any of you guys are using this same uh, setup to put your axles up, let me know. And what kind of trailer are you uh, using it on? But that's pretty much it guys. With that being said, I'll see you on the next video.